We are living through challenging, uncertain times, and it can be really hard to experience a sense of well being and thriving with all of the struggles that are going on. Self care is critical to that, to not only surviving, but actually thriving despite the challenges that are there. Thriving involves feeling and functioning well across various areas of life. Interestingly enough, we find that people can experience a sense of thriving despite experiencing different challenges. And we see that self-care is actually quite critical to being able to feel and function well despite challenges that might be there. Regardless of our background, we'll experience different stresses and challenges at different times. Indeed, stress is a common part of human experience. There can be little stresses such as changes in the weather, being stuck in traffic, or having to study for an exam. There can also be a lot bigger stresses such as ending or, or starting a job, changes in relationships, or living through a pandemic. So with the different challenges that we have, the busyness of life, how can we make self-care a priority despite all of those challenges? I use the framework I care in order to make self-care a priority. I care begins with I, intelligent agents. Taking care of our well-being is not about blindly following self-help advice or just taking anything that forward. There's a lot of research there about things that can actually be beneficial for our well-being. So being an intelligent agent means identifying what are some of those research-informed strategies that can be helpful to feel and function well. Just like we have to take care of our physical fitness, and we might do things like engage in regular activity, have a healthy diet, get some good sleep, we also need to take care of our mental fitness. I like to think about a gym, and so uh, we go to the gym in order to care about our, fit, our physical fitness, and in the same way, we need to regularly engage in things in order to build our mental fitness. C is for compassion. Compassion for ourselves and compassion for others. Compassion means that we're actually aware of other people's suffering. We feel with them, we're in common humanity with them. We often think about compassion as something for other people. And yet we also see that we can have compassion for ourselves. Self-compassion involves recognizing our common humanity. It's identifying that we are humans, that we make mistakes, and that's actually okay. A is for authenticity. Authenticity means knowing ourselves and living true to who we are. It means that we don't live for what others say that we should be or what social media defines that we ought to be like. It means being true to our person. What are your strengths? What are the things that really light you up that you really enjoy doing? What are some of your weaknesses? If we can identify who we truly are, our values, our beliefs, our strengths, what makes us human, and then really live that and use that in your everyday life, we experience a sense of well-being through that. R is for relationships. We as human beings have a deep need to connect and relate with other people. We are completely interconnected with others and people give us a reason to engage in self-care behaviors. Other people also can help encourage us and be a form of support when we are going through a period of struggle. One thing we can do is really think about how can I be a friend to others and really be real with the friends that I have. Um, so often we might have quick conversations with people, but are we real with them? Do we really prioritize the people that we really care about? As we prioritize other people, they help care for us and we care for them, supporting some of those deep needs for relatedness that we have. E is for easy. 
Self-care is much more likely to happen if there are simple activities that we incorporate into our everyday lives. The more it becomes something that you have to plan and you have to put all sorts of structures in place to make it happen, as we become more stressed, the less likely it is to happen. But the thing is, it's little things that we do in everyday life that have the biggest difference. An example of this is, what are a few things that make you feel good? They add a bit of positivity to your life. Uh, things like having a good cup of coffee, having a chat with a friend, going for a little walk. When you start to feel really negative or stressed, bring in one of these little positive actions and it's something that can be a quick boost on things. It's the little things that we do and the easier it is, the more it becomes a regular part of our everyday life. Looking after ourselves doesn't have to be complex, difficult, or time-consuming, but it can have a big payoff. Thriving does not just happen overnight. It's the little things that we do and we incorporate into our everyday lives, and through that, we're able to successfully navigate the different stresses and challenges that we experience in order to fully experience a sense of well-being.